Hello everybody, thank you for tuning to my first video. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you how to install and start developing STM32 programs on Linux. I'm running Linux Mint 19.1 for the reference and let's go. First of all, you're going to need to download a few packages. And first one is the GNU ARM compiler. Uh, you can head on to arm.com, uh, the link will be provided in the description, and download the latest version right now is 2010Q4 64-bit. We want to download this one. Okay, after you downloaded this, you will need to download the standard peripheral library and all the other firmware needed for your particular STM32 platform. Uh, in my case, I have the STM32 F4 discovery board, with the STM32F407 IC uh, and here's the board firmware package including other examples. We want to download that and when you click on the link uh, you will get to this site and you click get software. You will need to sign in or register if you're not already signed in but no problem you will uh, probably be back to this site. Also we will need the tool to upload your code to the STM32 board so head over to github techsend slash stlink uh, and download the latest release. Uh, click on this link and here will be the option source code zip or tar-gz. So after you downloaded all these files, I recommend them uh, to put them in all the same file and I use the folder embedded on my home folder. Here it is. And you can see the uh, GCC ARM uh, folder, the STLink folder, and the Discovery Firmware Package folder. Only thing we need to do right now is to compile the STLink. So we're going to the board and I'm just going to open the terminal and uh, enter the command make. This is going to compile all the necessary folders and uh, files. Okay, so the so this made another directory called build. So we're gonna go into the build, and there's only one folder inside. It's called release. Here we can see our new files: stflash and stinfo. Stflash will be used to upload code, and stinfo will be used to grab info from the board. So you want to move those two files into the parent directory. So dot dot slash dot dot slash. So we can see these two in here. This is so we can easily address these files globally later. So to do that, we're gonna go to the home directory and into the file basher c. So nano dot basher c, and this is the file where we will add the, these two lines at the end. I already have them in place. Here it is for the ARM. And you're gonna link your home folder embedded. This is the folder that has all the necessary files. And here's the ARM DCC folder. And inside the bin folder, that's where the compiler is. So you're gonna link this path. So only thing changes for you if you name this folder or put it somewhere else. Also, we're gonna add the link to stlink, uh, same home, or we can use the tilde. Oops. Yes, okay, just add. Uh, and uh, we will link, so the stlink files will be accessible globally inside this user. Uh, so if you want to upload code from any place uh, on your hard drive, you can do that. So to, okay, I have the correct changes. So to check if this works, just uh, type in source dot basher C. And this will refresh the terminal. So it will recognize arm long AB GCC. So we'll check the version and we can see it's the correct version 2018 Q4. Also, we can check the ST info version and yes it works globally version 1.5.1 1. 
we can check the IC that we have on hand, so ST info. And you can just click to get all the options. And we're gonna enter Pro and the LED blinked on my board and it recognized the F4 device. And right now, okay. Uh, and now we want to go into our sample folder that I made for you, which will be accessible on my Mega. Here it is. And uh, if uh, and you unzip this file, you will get all these files. So this is the main file, the make file, and the com flash and the systems.c files. These are the files for this particular board and also we will be linking other files from the firmware package that we downloaded later so let's look at the make file and the main file uh, i use atom for working on this kind of projects but you can use any other text editor you want uh, and here we can see the empty main file and here's the make file let me walk through it here is the link to the st link firmware so it will know where to find it here is the link to the main and system file that is going to compile. Later, when we're going to use libraries, we're going to also include other C files for the appropriate libraries, like RCC and GPIO. But for now, we just have the main. Here's the name for your own project. You can change this. So all the output files will be named test.elf.hex.bin. And here is the path to your folder where all the libraries, libraries are and this is uh, on the same tree so if you have different package you have to check also here. Here are all the dependencies used here so all the header files uh, and it's linked uh, dependently on the file that we downloaded so if you have the different file with a different structure you might have to alter this so this is only for this board and this file. So here we can see the path to the all the files and here are all the header files includes. You can change we will change this later when we will add uh, files for FreeRTOS. Uh, so we can run it on this board. Down here we can see all the make commands, all prod, clean and burn. Uh, we'll just run make to make the files, clean to clean them if you want to and burn to activate the ST flash tool to write this project binary into the uh, device. So uh, I'm just gonna replace this with my username and we can test it. So we'll run inside here a terminal and just run make and it will compile successfully all three files, hex, elf and bin. And now we can initiate make burn and the LEDs are blinking and it has uploaded the code to our board and now it's just an empty main so it will be just captured in the, inside this while loop doing nothing but uh, in the later video we will add functionality such as interfacing LEDs, uh, buttons and onboard uh, gyroscope and other peripherals that are available on this development board. So. Now you have everything to start your STM32 project. So if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. And uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.